Joining us now, he's a really big deal. He's a big deal. I know. Big deal. I'm told this. I'm not very pop cultured. I'm sorry. Comedian, movie star, author, and host of the show Brand X, Russell Brand. This summer, he's embarking on his first ever worldwide comedy tour, The Messiah Complex. Caddy Kay and Brian Shackman are here as well, and he already told Brian that he might want to disrobe. I'm just saying. Well, I just thought maybe I could loosen up a little, show a little more chest hair, and he no, said maybe I should I do a little more. I only think Russell can do that. You look fantastic. Yeah. That is a very kind compliment. You also look beautiful. Brian, you are free to wear whatever you want. This is one of your freedoms that is afforded to you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh-oh. Silver uh, boots? The boots are I want to see them. Come on. Put them Come on the on. table. Kinky boots oh. time. Wow. So there are some boots. boots. Those are nice. There you put your feet nice. up. Relax. Um, I wouldn't do that. I don't want to disrespect, disrespect your program. Okay. No, no. We're, you did ask to see No, I did. Boots. And I like a fellow English woman, so and we I do, obliged. We've talked about kinky boots recently. So yes. It's a it fantastic shirt. You have to go. Yes. Okay, Russell. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. You just disrespected the table. The table. Giant Jenga. It's like your desk is a puzzle. It is. I'm sorry about that. What is Can the I solution? I think. Can't we get like you know, 30 seconds now? Well, not really, love. I mean, Gandhi, this is go. Like wow. work. <laughs> Gandhi, go. Gandhi, go. I hope that's yeah. not your message Gandhi. to Gandhi and the people of India. No. I, you know, it's it's funny though because I, I travel a lot. And All these people are at work, are they? Yeah, they're working. Yeah. They're just at work. Well, no. Work more quietly. They're Facebooking, actually. <laughs> what are they doing? Facebooking. Yeah. They're Facebooking. Yeah, yeah. Shopping. I bet they can't look at pornography. I bet it's blocked on their oh, website. Oh, huh? I don't know. People, I mean, you have a pretty broad range here. I'm going to ask a serious question. Can yeah. I try? I'll try. Try. It's never okay, going to work. I'll try. Go ahead. Everyone asks, what do you like better, TV, movies, or stand up? But which, actually, which one's more difficult? I mean, going on stage, I think, is probably pretty tough. A movie can be boring because you shoot a thing a hundred times. TV is what it is. There are uh, challenges in all of those different disciplines. The thing I enjoy most is stand-up comedy because you're direct with your audience. You can't be misinterpreted. People can't get confused. You know what happens if you work in media? People like to uh, change the information so that it suits a particular agenda. If you're in a room with people, then what you're saying is clear. If you say something that, pe that people are confused about, you can explain it to them then. If you say something because a joke, people can't pretend that you're saying it seriously so I like having direct communication with people because I believe people are very very intelligent but got, the information gets manipulated a lot and people like to cause like you know f fake stirs and stuff you know funny the accent you know when I see him in person it's totally fine forgetting Sarah Marshall or the TV show it's fine but on satellite radio in the car I can't understand a single joke you, you say. can't understand no. it can you I understand can't. me yes but no, I'm telling you, when I'm driving in the car and he's Stop. everyone's laughing in the audience of the radio I'm like I have no idea what he's just Best you focus on your driving, Brian. <laughs> You're a man, you don't want to be distracted by humor. You might crash into right, a pedestrian. Okay. So it's a good thing. I think it's probably for the best. I think I'm just, my, this is my first... Um, brand experience? Brand, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's not listening to him, it's, ex it's experience. It's just sort of taking it all in. You are talking about me as if I'm, I'm not here and as if I'm an extraterrestrial. <laughs> Well, you know really. I'm from a country well, that's near to you. You're a shop window dummy. We're just sort of admiring the whole, you know, it's the whole thing, isn't well, it? Well, thank you for it's your like casual objectification. It's an experience. I'm yeah, glad that it's positive for it's you. It's very positive, yeah. absolutely. Any, more, any other questions? <laughs> yeah, I'm a little nervous. You've become nervous. Okay. Why are you nervous? Really? No, I'm you're a powerful the... woman. You've oh, got a lovely yes. job. What seems to be the trouble? <laughs> I don't know. You've got a hair like Princess Diana. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I've never when she was alive. Here's a little subtext. Yes. I'm petrified of her, and you oh, have her yeah. on her heels. She's just moved down the I other table. I absolutely love this. Russell Brand was clearly provoked during this interview. However, he handled the situation masterfully by creating and at times even imposing his own reality on the journalists. He was absolutely calm whilst artistically handling all the arguments thrown at him, and he managed to reframe the discussion to make it fit his own narrative. That is the quintessence of frame control. Framing is a technique that almost all high-performance speakers use to control the flow and outcome of a conversation in crucial setting situations. The importance of owning the frame simply cannot be understated. It's how the media gets you to believe their angle on a particular story. It's how politicians outperform their opponents. It's how influential people communicate their influence to others. One's capacity for personal decisions, lifestyle choices, emotional investments, religious beliefs and political inclinations are all influenced by our proclivity towards certain frames. 
What I want to discuss today is how to become completely aware of the concept of frame in order to improve the way you communicate, but also understand the way others are trying to influence you, get their message across, and win debates. You can think of your frame as a window frame that you are constantly looking through. As you move the frame around, the stimuli that you encounter are interpreted by your brain in ways consistent with your beliefs, values and identity. This is your perspective or point of view. In every human relationship, each individual projects his or her own personal frame. When different frames face off, beliefs, values, ideas and instincts collide. Your frame, because it somehow represents your identity, is something very dear to you. It constitutes the substrate of your belief system and, when it is questioned, it feels as if someone convulses the foundation of your being. That's not an easy thing to accept, so your ego gets triggered and you react. You experience a fight or flight response, you become defensive, competitive and you want your view to be respected. Our whole existence can be interpreted as a perpetual struggle to assert frame control. It can be exhausting not just experiencing it firsthand, but also even watching it being performed by other people. Nonetheless, properly fathoming and applying when needed the power of frame is one of the most important communication mechanisms one can ever learn. No truth is more absolutely certain than that all that exists for knowledge and therefore this whole world is only object in relation to subject, perception of a perceiver, in a word, idea. The world is idea. That's what Schopenhauer wrote in The World as Will and Representation, and willingly or unwillingly he attempted to introduce us to the concept of frame. He wasn't the first one to do it though. Frame wars have been practiced extensively in ancient Greece when people were trying to influence others in the famous Agora. The tactics and the delivery may have evolved through time, but the main principles of frame control remain more or less the same. These principles were also adopted by Russell Brand during his interview, hence I chose the name The Russell Brand Method for this video, and they are as follows. A robust belief system, a strong body language, clarity and presence, and an ability to capitalize on weak arguments. Let's take each of these in turn for further analysis. Maintaining frame is nearly impossible without a unifying worldview, or a philosophy of life if you will. Lack of a robust belief system is usually to blame when we lose our frame during a conversation. If you have managed to create a strong life philosophy, and you are practicing it on an ongoing basis, you will eventually form a strong opinion around it. You will be able to support your arguments without hesitation because you are well versed in your subject and your arguments represent you and your fundamental beliefs. They are an extension of your lifestyle, so to speak. An adherence to a strong belief system is the reality behind every single frame battle. It is evident when politicians debate, when priests evangelize their religious beliefs, and when business people try to pitch their product. In the case of Russell Brand, for instance, this is clearly exhibited when he explains the reason he prefers stand-up comedy to TV or cinema. There are challenges in all of those different disciplines. The thing I enjoy most is stand-up comedy because you're direct with your audience. You can't be misinterpreted, people can't get confused. You know what happens if you work in media, people like to uh, change the information so that it suits a particular agenda. If you're in a room of people then what you're saying is clear. If you say something that, pe that people are confused about you can explain it to them then. If you say something because a joke people can't pretend that you're saying it seriously. So I like having direct communication with people because I believe people are very very intelligent but got the information gets manipulated a lot and people like to cause like, you know, fake stirs and stuff. He artfully explains why stand-up comedy is so special compared to other forms of uh, entertainment and ensures that his reasoning is deeply rooted in his own belief system and overall worldview. Body language subcommunicates one's emotional state throughout a conversation and that can have a huge impact on oneself while exercising frame control. Firstly, an open chest while leaning back, which allows the person to avoid slouching, can be extremely helpful. Having an open, upright chest with uncrossed arms is a very strong pose that communicates confidence. Crossing one's arms is a defensive pose and is usually perceived as weak and insecure. Secondly, a deeper voice can help people engage with the speaker and pay attention. 
Vocal tonality has the capacity to evoke specific feelings and reveal a hint of one's identity through their words. It is this underlying factor that gives a different color to one's messages and reinforces one's image and rhetoric. Thirdly, hand movements and gestures can be used extensively to enhance one's credibility and persuasiveness. Our brain is capable of sensing the slightest hand and finger movement and during a conversation or a speech, if hands and gestures are used effectively, they can empower the delivery of a message. Centuries ago, the brilliant philosopher William of Ockham stated the importance of reducing things to their simplest elements. Entities shall not be multiplied beyond need. It is futile to explain with many things what can be explained by only a few things. This simple yet profound concept has influenced many great thinkers and has frequently revealed its importance within the context of a frame battle. Especially in debates, great speakers know that the key is to reduce things to their simplest elements. They focus on what they can control, not on what they cannot. They focus on their strengths, not their weaknesses, and whenever they don't have a great answer, they reframe the question to something opposite to their narrative. Overanalyzing, overthinking, and overcomplicating can instill doubt and hesitation in one's mind. It can force a speaker to submit to their emotions, overwhelming them and affecting their stream of reasoning. Russell Brand, apart from possessing a robust belief system, is also a very resilient person. His clarity is rock solid and even if it sometimes appears that he will lose the frame, his presence helps him recover smoothly. He clearly demonstrates this ability when he is referred to as a shop window dummy by Gary Kay, co-host of The Morning Show taking it all in. You are talking about me as if I'm, I'm not here and as if I'm an extraterrestrial. <laughs> you know I'm from a country well, that's kind of near to you. You're a window dummy. We're just sort of admiring the whole, you know, it's the whole thing, isn't well, it? Well, thank you for it's your like casual objectification. It's an experience. Brand's response, thank you for your casual objectification, is simply masterful. Debates, interviews and verbal confrontations can get ugly and challenging. A calm state, as discussed earlier, offers clarity of thought. If a speaker is unaffected by the insults and provocations people throw at him or her, he or she can gain a competitive advantage. Not only because people can perceive him or her as a calm and resilient figure, but also because he or she will have time to evaluate their words and use them as counter-arguments. Frame control is basically an exercise in composure. Again, this is demonstrated exceptionally by Russell Brand when co-host Brian Shackman tries to pick on Brand's accent by suggesting that he cannot understand a word he says when listening to him on the radio. You know, funny, the accent, you know, when I see him in person, it's totally fine. Forgetting Sarah Marshall or the TV show, it's fine. But on satellite radio in the car, I can't understand a single joke you say. You said. can't understand no. it. Can you I understand can't. me? Yes, but no, I'm telling you, when I'm driving in the car and he's, everyone's laughing in the audience of the radio, I'm like, I have no idea what he's saying. It's said. best you focus on your driving, Brian. <laughs> You're a man, you don't want to be distracted by humor. You might crash into right, a pedestrian. Okay. So it's a good thing. I think it's probably for the best. Unaffected by the comment, Brand seizes the opportunity and reverses the frame dynamic by mocking Sackman's inability to multitask and suggesting that it is actually for the best that he doesn't understand his jokes. A truly amazing comeback. Frame control is just a reminder of how we're constantly sabotaged by our own nature. The world is indeed an idea and we just end up fighting each other over different ideas. Our ego is the enemy here, ergo a frame battle is essentially an ego battle. And because our egos are still very strong, frame battles will never end. Especially when we encounter egos that are so big and can become so powerful that we need to use opposing egos just to attenuate their power. Unfortunately, we can't get rid of the ego. At least when we use it to support our frame, let's make sure that it is used for a good cause. Let's make sure that our ego won't end up being wasted on the wrong side of history. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications and comment below something cool please so that more people can discover it. Uh, if you want to watch more videos from my channel, check out this one and this one. Take care, see you soon. Adrian out.